Hey folks, so Sanjeev here and today what I want to showcase to you is this uh, neat use of the proportional controller. Uh, proportional controller is just the P part of the PID controller which is proportional, integral and derivative. Uh, even though many teams claim that uh, they actually use the full PID, in practice even if they implement the full PID they usually end up setting the constants for integral and derivative to zero. So in effect it just becomes a proportional uh, algorithm. In practice, it works quite well. So one of the one of the things that I noticed when running World Robotics League Championship is quite often in FTC or even in WRL or any other competition, if you are having a large metal robot, you want to lift up the arm and hold it in a certain position. So for example, here is an arm that I built up, and I built up it in a really really simple manner. There's a base uh, plate here, and there's an Animark Neverest 40 motor over here. And then uh, it is mounted just like directly. There are no gears or anything connected to this thing. It's just like you know flat, uh, as you can see over here. So what I wanted to do was just essentially see if I could write a P controller that could actually lift it and hold it at a certain location without using any mechanical obstruction, which is what a bunch of teams end up doing. What that end, ends up doing is essentially they would apply a large amount of power and then the arm would lift and it would hit a metal bar. For example, there would be a metal bar or something and it would just hit and hold it here. Unfortunately, the higher the motor power that you apply while holding it, uh, and which essentially is stalling the motor, the, the more heat dissipates uh, in the motor and eventually the motor will burn out. It's not a great idea. So what we did instead was we applied a proportional algorithm. So the motor gets a, like you know, let's say I decide that uh, the maximum power that I'm willing to give to the motor is something like 0.5. Because I do know that with that power, the motor actually can get up pretty easily. Then I know that at some point of time, uh, the motor will actually, the, the weight that's on the motor, over here what I've done is just to uh, prove up, I have actually added a Tetrix motor and attached a wheel to it. So the motor can just go up, just to showcase that there is uh, some amount of weight on the motor itself. So that's what we, that's why this uh, weird looking contraption. So we know that as the motor starts lifting and as it starts getting closer to its intended target, it'll actually uh, start decreasing the power. Uh, so it'll start with the max power and then it'll start decreasing the power and towards the end, it'll just finish up and stop right there. Uh, and that's what our intent is. Now, the key thing to actually remember is that uh, in, the, in, the, in the P controller, uh, we'll have to set the max value uh, up front, like, you know, the motor starts with that power and just set the key, uh, which is the proportionality constant uh, to a certain uh, value. You will have to experiment a little bit to figure out how uh, to ensure that essentially the weight can be lifted and can be held at a certain location. So in our case, uh, 0.5 was enough. And now let's look at uh, this experiment. Now, one thing I wanted to point out was I actually have this uh, somewhat heavy five pound plates over here and I'm putting them at the base. I didn't want to build a complex rig. Uh, and this rig actually what ends up happening is the motor has so much power that it ends up lifting this whole thing. So I just weighed down with the two five pound plates here so that this can lift and come back. Now, important, really important, make sure you always put on your safety glasses. Uh, your eyes are not really replaceable, but the hardware is. So with that, uh, I have set it to actually go about 200 encoder positions, uh, which is uh, given the Mark motors, we have about 1,120 uh, encoder positions in one single uh, rotation of the, of the motor, uh, at least for Mark uh, Neverest 40 motors. So uh, 200 will take it about, I would say, a fifth of the way. So let's now run it and see how it how well it works. So here we go. And as you can see, it actually went up and bounced around a little bit and is holding it over here. Uh, let's take a look at it one more time. Stop the pro robot program and let's run it again. And there you go. It actually holds it right there. And what this does is, as you can see, like it's holding the position fairly well. And although you can't see this on the phone, you can download the program from winningrobotics.com and, um, and have a go at it. But uh, we find this really useful because uh, even though the motor started with 0.5 power, which was quite a bit, it actually right now says something like 0.22 power, which is at this position, it is plenty enough to actually hold the motor in at, at its uh, location. So that's a cool tip that we wanted to share with you.